Greetings. I want to tell a story here based on a few charts that will paint a picture for you about how close we are to a housing bust in many ways similar to the one that we saw in 2008 and 2009. Now this first chart is the 30 year mortgage rate from the US Federal Reserve. And it's not that it was at some unusual level in 2018-19, but because of COVID-19, the Federal Reserve, instead of sending cash directly to people, which would have been far more diffuse and fair, they decided to prop up the housing market by buying mortgage-backed securities. And they bought so many mortgage-backed securities that mortgage rates got to a record low, under 3%. 2.65% at its lowest point. And then they decided to stop buying mortgage-backed securities and start selling them, quantitative tightening. Now, if there's one thing worse than buying mortgage-backed securities and distorting one part of the market, it's then selling the same mortgage-backed securities to cause the reverse problem and destroy all decision-making across the economy. So the mortgage rate almost tripled the 7%, and even now it's at 6.15%, down a little bit, but very high from this level. And remember that a mortgaged house is a very leveraged asset, so slight fluctuations in home price have a tremendous effect on whether the person who owns the house makes money in terms of home equity or loses the down payment that they had put down and are in negative equity. And for this reason, the way to interpret the pressure that a high mortgage rate is inflicting on the housing market is to measure the area enclosed by this chart. So take a certain base, let's say 4%. You could even take 3%, but you could take 4%. Where you take the base is not that important. The key measurement is what is the area enclosed by a base of, let's say, 4%, if we choose 4%, and this line. So the higher the mortgage rate is, the area enclosed rises, but the longer it stays higher, the area enclosed by these lines also rises. So even if 7% comes down to 6.15%, if it stays at 6.15% for a few additional weeks, that has the same effect in increasing the area enclosed. And this area enclosed is a very good measurement of how much cumulative pressure there is on housing prices in the United States, which then affects the entire world economy, just like it did in 2008 and 2009. So as this area enclosed rises, meaning as time passes and mortgage rates still stay high enough to keep this area rising, there is cumulative downward pressure on housing prices to the extent that people who bought during this low mortgage period will have negative equity. Now the problem with many American consumers is that they don't realize that this is a two variable equation. They think that mortgage rates being low means it's a time to buy a house because that would be a good time to buy a car since car prices don't fluctuate as auto loan rates go up and down. The same is not true for housing. When mortgage rates fall, housing prices rise. And when mortgage rates rise, housing prices fall. So the time to buy is when mortgage rates are higher. And then as rates fall, you gain home equity from the underlying home price going up. I speak about that in great detail in this video up here. But this is a two variable equation, therefore too complicated for the average consumer to grasp. A 3% mortgage on a $1 million house is a similar monthly payment as a 5% mortgage on a $600,000 house. But then buying when the house price is a million dollars and the mortgage rate is 3% and thinking the rate is low is a very precarious and vulnerable thing to do because you have a lot of downside risk and a chance for negative equity. And the Federal Reserve bails people out by buying mortgage-backed securities, but that is not only a moral hazard by doing that type of narrowly concentrated money printing, thereby not benefiting people who didn't get in over their heads in a mortgage. It destroys decision-making across the economy and distorts this sector entirely. But this is chart number one, and I want everyone to track the area enclosed by this mortgage rate and some base number that you choose. It could be 4% or 3%. Now we go to the second chart. This is U.S. construction spending, and this red line is the one we're going to pay attention to. Because mortgage rates were low, home construction got stimulated to a record high level, much higher than even the peak in 2006-2007, which had to have a bust for several years just to digest all that construction. Now we're at something much higher. And yes, this is not as a percentage of GDP, in which case the peak would not seem as extreme, 
but the U.S. is also in a demographically less favorable situation with an aging population and millions of baby boomers winding down their need for a big house, downsizing when there's not enough buyers for their big house. If a baby boomer household who is 65 or 70 is trying to sell their house and they think it's worth $3 million, are there enough buyers willing to pay $3 million? So all this additional housing supply got constructed and now this is going down. As the spending goes down, on one hand, there's too much new supply, so home prices have downward pressure. On the other hand, a decrease in construction spending also reduces GDP and reduces construction jobs, which in turn increases unemployment. So you have two negative reinforcing cycles because of this peak being an extreme that cannot be sustained. This home construction amount is a significant percentage of the entire U.S. GDP. Now we'll go to a third chart that is similar and very related. 